Hello everybody, this is my second vlog and today what I wanted to do was share with you something I've created using the uh, Roly uh, light pad. Something that I really like from the iOS version is the noise app and particularly I really like the way that the drum kits work. The nice thing about the drum kits uh, is that they often make use of uh, MPE expressions, whereas um, if you put together your own drum kit, you may not necessarily be able to get the same functionality. What I've created here is uh, a test uh, drum kit. Uh, this drum kit makes use of slides and glides and uh, pressure and everything. So what I've started here uh, is with just the stock Roly MPE application. Uh, so basically you go to apps, select mode, uh, 4x4 MPE mode. The bottom eight pads I've used for various percussions and then the top uh, eight pads I've used for, a, for an instrument. So the very first pad of course is a kick. I'm using Reaper right now and as you can see here I've used um, the Resamplomatic 5000 to just uh, trigger the sample every time I strike it. Now what you'll hear in the background is another sound effect. So that is ultra analog uh, from AAS hanging out in the background with uh, the bug shop uh, effect, which I really like. Next is a snare. Now the th neat thing about the snare here is uh, I've used the note on and note off to uh, create uh, two different uh, sounds. And so. Whereas uh, if it was uh, just the snare. My third uh, pad I've set up as a hi-hat. So let's uh, mute uh, the background here for a second so we can play with this pad. Now, the first thing I've done with this pad that's interesting is that I've uh, turned channel pressure into a note repeater. In addition to uh, doing that, this pad also So it adds to the hat um, with a kind of mechanical sound. And that is uh, also from AAS, that's chromophone using the harmonic phasing. And then in addition, I've had the volumes of the two uh, invert. So as I uh, slide upwards, uh, the volume of chromophone increases, uh, whereas uh, the volume of the hat itself decreases. Now, the remainder uh, of the pads here uh, are uh, just basic samples. So from a five through eight, these are just samples. For the uh, eight pads on the top, I've mapped them to a um, Vietnamese pentatonic scale, and I've used a patch from a Kong's Chin VST uh, to create what to me sounds a little bit like a, a Vietnamese moon lute. The reverb and, and effects here are being supplied um, by um, bias effects. I've been uh, liking bias effects a lot lately because it's a very low CPU load. Uh, for these pads, I've also made use of MPE to uh, add a channel pressure. So the channel pressure then uh, becomes a wah effect. <laughs> All right, so that's the pad. How did I put it all together? Okay, so some of these things are specific to Reaper. I haven't looked uh, to see uh, if some of these uh, automation mappings um, and all these MIDI links can actually uh, work in, say, Ableton or something like that. Uh, it's something that I'd consider maybe in the future if people are interested. My main difficulty in creating uh, what I had here 
is that uh, the way uh, MPE normally works, or at least in this implementation, is that if I hit something over here, and then something over there, if one note ends and the other one begins, there they can be on the same channel and so the channels are used up uh, opportunistically but actually you don't know exactly what channel is going to be used that's great uh, for um, existing mpe um, enabled uh, synths and vsts uh, but that's a little bit more difficult if you're trying to create something uh, from scratch from just like basic samplers so what i had to do was figure out a way uh, to map everything uh, so that each pad went to one channel. Now, a lot of this is complicated by the fact that the way uh, Roly's MPE implementation works for the light pad is here you can see there's no way to assign uh, pads to channels. So I divided my work into multiple steps. Uh, the, the first step is trying to uh, route the data from uh, every pad to one specific channel, despite the fact that it's always changing channels. I need to somehow always route this to one, this to two, this to three, this to four, this to five, and so on and so forth. I've made a, a track specifically to receive the MPE data. I've uh, I've armed it for recording, but I've actually uh, disabled recording, and it's, so it's basically only uh, monitoring. That way, it's always reading whatever is coming in to my selected device. In this case, being uh, the light pad. Now, what really does all the magic here um, is this pro program called uh, Note Mapper. Uh, Note Mapper is created by someone named CodeFN42, and now what I've done is I've reduced my range here to just the notes that are used on the light pad by default. Note Mapper lets you output uh, any given note, map that note uh, as many as three different times. In this case, I wanted it to continue to map uh, its original note on the channel that it was, but I wanted to add a signal. That signal is basically what channel it's on. I was trying to figure out different ways to encode that signal, um, and I noticed that that Roly always left channel one open. So just in case they were using it for something important, I didn't want to encode that information into channel one. So what I decided to do was encode what channel it was on into the other notes uh, that are available in MIDI. So here you can see I'm only using notes 36 through 51. So I have notes from zero to 35 and from 52 all the way up to 127 that I can use to send some sort of information. C1 uh, can strike, um, will be striking uh, the note on, on whatever channel it was originally. So here C1 is onto two, uh, here C1 is onto three. But on top of that, notice what's happening with my second mapping. If C1 strikes on channel 2, it encodes to uh, channel 2, note, MIDI note 2. But if it strikes on channel 3, it still uh, sends to channel 2, and it sends it to uh, note 3. Now, why is that useful? Well, so now, basically, every time I get a note on, on the note C1, then it always strikes something on channel 2 between 1 and 16. And, and which one of those it strikes is the channel that it's going to. And I've done that mapping um, all the way across for all 16 pads. The second pad, this uh, 37 C sharp, that one sends to channel two, but uh, to, uh, but between 101 and 116. Once I'm done with note mapper here, I'm sending out a MIDI signal that says, hey, this is um, what channel I'm on, that, that corresponds to this note. 
those are 16 different notes and I have to sum that up into some kind of message that's easier to read. So what I've done here, you'll notice that uh, then all of the odd numbered pads use the lower uh, 1 to 16 uh, of, their, of, of, a, of a given channel, whereas the even pads use uh, 101 to 116 of the given pad. All right, so uh, I have used Piz's program MIDI Converter 3 uh, and uh, done some calculations for both the odd pads, pads and the even pads. And what the calculation here is, um, is that I've turned the notes from 1 uh, to 16 uh, or 101 to 116. And I've turned them to um, a CC note between 8 and 127. Now I have a CC message that corresponds to a channel, right? And, and this is really useful. So uh, channel 2 CC1 is now uh, the, the MIDI message for what channel pad 1 is on. Channel 2 CC2 is where pad 2 is. Um, channel 3 CC1 is where pad 3 is, channel 3 CC2 is where pad 4 is, and so on and so forth. So what I've done from there is create separate tracks for each of the pads. Two other programs by Piz are MIDI Channel Filter. So these are all VSTs. Uh, there's MIDI Channel Filter and MIDI Channelize. Uh, MIDI Channel Filter is a one uh, variable VST that basically uh, is a notch filter for the one channel. It lets only that one channel through. MIDI Channelize takes whatever data that's left and uh, converts that to whatever channel. So here, you know, what, what it says right now is that it's going to only capture channel 14, but then immediately convert it into channel 1. Here's the part that is very specific to Reaper. What I've done here is make this channel a variable correspond here to middle MIDI CC one on channel two. So now MIDI channel filter reads channel 2 CC1 and turns that into the channel variable. So every time I strike pad 1, a note on message is sent. That note on message uh, is routed to a second note on message telling me what channel it is. All that gets turned into this the CC message. That CC message then gets turned into this channel variable. Right now it looks like this note this pad is always striking on channel 14. But I think if I finagle things a little bit, I can make it change. You see that? So after I did a lot of polyphony there, then something else used channel 14, and now it's up at channel 16. But now I've done this basically uh, exactly the same process on all of them. I've just repeated the same thing here. So you can see for pad number two, I've done a channel filter for pad two. Hooking up this MIDI channel two. Now this is CC two. Um, message. And that changes which channel is being filtered in real time. The end result of this step is now every single pad from one through 16 is sending one channel's worth of data only that is dynamically changing uh, to match whatever notes being struck. But it's all sending that now as if it was on one channel. So now pad one is uh, the its output is to channel one, pad two's output is channel uh, two, pad three's output is to channel three. So now basically I've got 16 channels 
each one with its own data. But once all that's done, we can basically hide those pads And what I've done then is just route all of them. I've just routed every single one to a new track that sums them all up. This new track is also the track where recording of the kit happens. In noise, you're able to overdub over and over and noise inside of itself keeps track of which channels are being used and which ones aren't being used and you don't have any problems. But uh, there's nothing built into my system so far uh, that will keep track of overdubs not overlapping with each other. However, the output is always pad specific. So if I can record the output instead of recording the input, then I can use that output as a standard way of handling every single pad. So what I've done uh, to that is that this is actually where I do all my recording from. Okay, and I've set it up in an interesting way. I set it up as no inputs, but what I record is my MIDI output. Okay, so I, I can record it there. And what I've done now is create another set of tracks, which I call the MIDI out. So what I have here is the MIDI in, where I'm grabbing all the data from, uh, from my uh, light pad, my MIDI merge, where I'm taking all the information and I can also record its output. All right, and then here is where all the MIDI outputs go, okay? So the MIDI outputs, um, what I've done uh, with this right here is it, um, it sends this information on to uh, where all the samples are gonna be played on, but it receives from the merge channel, okay? And it has a bunch of children uh, and all of those children will pass its, their MIDI data up to the parent. So what I can do here is I just record a kick and snare so I can move that down to a child kick and snare. Again, I would record up here. There's no problem worrying about them overlapping with each other because they are all uh, recorded to uh, separate channels. So let's move my pre-recorded ones back in. So there. So I'm going to show you uh, the various techniques I use to make the sounds. More or less, I create a new track for each uh, sound. You can think of this as basically, I now have a MIDI instrument that sends the note, uh, you know, 36 to um, channel one with all of the requisite MPE data, all right? And then you can then just send to a track that MIDI output and then do what you want with it. Now. Remember for the snare, I did a note on that was one thing and a note off that was another thing. Uh, again, I use MIDI Converter 3. So the note on is very easy. That's just a trigger, right? Um, but the note off, I use MIDI Converter 3 to read the note off and turn it into a note on. Okay, now the hats that's a little bit more complicated. What I'm using is just a sample trigger. That's straightforward. But watch the way this repeater works. 
as I push harder. So what I've done here is create one of those modulation links a la MIDI links that we've seen before. Uh, and then this MIDI link is tied up to channel pressure. And you have to play around a little bit uh, with your the starting value uh, what it, and and how much you scale or offset the values. Um, so basically uh, to transform it. Uh, so in this case, as I hit it more, I want this number to be smaller. So it's a negative scale for that reason. It's, so I can still strike it. Maybe I should mute that now. But as soon as I touch it, then it goes down like that. I have set up a, a note filter specifically because remember there are signals being sent in that lower register. In this particular case, uh, Chromophone reads other notes. So I wanted to filter that out. Um, now what Chromophone is doing here is adding that harmonic phase sound. So the way that is set up again, so I just, the easiest possible thing is just to do the, the global volume. Uh, and here I've attached it to uh, CC74, which is the default one uh, for um, the uh, slide function. Like that. Okay, and so the last ones that really use the MPE functionality here, um, First off, I just use another instance of uh, Note Mapper uh, to map this to a pentatonic scale. One change that I had to make uh, was that uh, pitch bend for these Rolly devices um, is quite granular. What I've done here is basically divide the sens sensitivity of the pitch bend. Um, I did a little bit of velocity control here. Uh, this is in part because I want my light taps to be full. Because as you know, uh, I wanna use the, the channel pressure later on to do the wah effect. Uh, to handle the wah effect, basically I've selected channel pressure and I turn uh, channel pressure into a miscellaneous a CC uh, message. You have to mess with it a little bit to see where it sounds great for you. But then I added a um, wah pedal to bias effects. Uh, this is the pro version, which lets you control things by MIDI. So now, Check out the links below for more details on what I've done um, that you can follow. Uh, I'll put up some downloads to my templates in Reaper. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I do hope that eventually Roly either makes uh, an, an app uh, for a light pad that lets you customize what channel goes to what pad because I still feel like this is probably uh, a little bit um, hacked hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope this was a, a useful uh, tool for you to start thinking about percussion and MPE. I think that's one of uh, two Rolly's credit. One of the innovations that they've really made uh, in my mind uh, that has uh, caused me to reimagine the way drum pads work. Uh, this is uh, just a demo. Um, I'm pretty happy with what it is. And more importantly, the template that I've produced here is totally reusable and customizable. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please do uh, leave them for me uh, in the comments uh, and uh, keep enjoying making music.